Hello YouTube again. I finally got my computer back up and running and my mic is now working properly, yay. Also, I have decided to rewrite my game from scratch in Godot 4. Um, it was just too much work to port it, there were like 3000 something bugs. Uh, which would have taken me forever. Uh, not only that, but my game was just written really badly. Um, it was when I started learning Godot, I started writing that game, so it was just full of things done in a really bad way, um, bad code. Yeah, it just wasn't worth porting over. So yeah, I'm starting from scratch, which means I get to record all of my progress. Um, and the first thing I've done is I've just put my tile set in here, set up the collisions, and now I want to recreate my player character. And for that, um, I am going to do something quite controversial. Instead of a kinematic body, I am going to use a rigid body. Um, why would I do that? Maybe I just like suffering, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm not trying to make a precision platformer, so it doesn't really matter how much control I have over the body. Um, if you wanted to make something like Celeste, I guess you would go for the kinematic body and control it perfectly. Um, I'm going to go the rigid body route because why not? Everyone else is doing kinematic bodies, I'll do something different. Um, maybe from my experience you can see how not to make a player character. Um, I'm sure it's going to be difficult, there are going to be lots of issues, um, it's going to be a lot more work, but it'll be a fun challenge, so let's go for it. Um, so our body is a kinematic body 2D. I'm gonna make him about 65 kilograms and I will lock the rotation because we don't want him flopping around. Uh, you'll see here that it is missing a collision shape so there's a warning. So that's what we'll add next. So collision shape 2D and there's another warning because it doesn't have a shape which we can set here on the right and we'll make him a capsule. Um, capsules are nice because they got rounded corners so you shouldn't really get stuck on anything um, and I can make it upright and let's see let's make him this is the radius so we'll set the radius to 8 uh, so basically half of his width is 8 so that means he's 16 pixels wide which is the same as my tile set so that should be a good number so he's 16 pixels wide and we'll make him 32 pixels tall, which is exactly twice my tile set, so he's two blocks high and one block wide, um, which should be fine. So we'll save that. Um, <laughs> I already made a player earlier, but I'm remaking him just for this video, so we'll just call him new player and we'll save him. Um, he will need a script, and First of all, we're going to need some variables to move them around, so let's do that now. So we'll call them move right, and I'll call it move right force. Um, since it's a rigid body, we're going to be implying, sorry, we're going to be applying impulses to it, and those will need to be vector twos. So to move him right, maybe a value of around. 1500. I'll set the Y to 0 because we don't want him moving up or down, only left and right. And I'll do the same for move left, except for moving left on the X axis we need to apply a negative force. And let's see what happens. So we'll first check if the player pushes a key. So if input dot is action pressed if it's held down. Um, so if he's moving, let's start off with right, if he's moving right, we'll need to apply an impulse. Apply impulse and we'll use our move right force. Um, it does need two parameters so we can also set the position where this force will be applied and we'll set it to zero zero which is the center of the body. Um, and let's do the same, but for move left. So if input, if action is pressed, move left. I've already set up my um, input map in the options, so that's all fine. And 
if the player pushes the move left button then we apply the move left uh, force okay and that's it for the really basic stuff we're going to add him to the scene um, so that's our new player and we'll drop him on here oh sorry that is the player confused let me rename him so I can actually see what I'm doing <laughs> we got to put him on our level sorry ah, why is it changing scenes here okay there we go so now he's on the level uh, we'll just move him up so he's not stuck in the floor um, so where's his position uh, we'll move him up 16 pixels which is half of his height okay and let's see what happens there he is. Uh, I've turned on the um, show collision shapes for debugging because he doesn't actually have a sprite yet. He'd be invisible. Uh, so at least you can see him now. And yeah, moving left and right works fine. He does accelerate more and more the longer we hold the button because it just keeps applying the force if the key is pressed. Uh, if there weren't any walls here, we could go infinitely fast, which would be a problem. So we need to limit that somehow. Um, so let's go back to our player and add another variable and we'll call this one our move speed and we'll call it move speed max that's our limit um, and let's set that to about 120 uh, now we'll need to check his move speed as well so if he's moving right and his linear sorry linear velocity dot x so just the x component is greater than our move speed max no <laughs> if it's less than our move speed max then we can apply more force but if it's greater than the move speed max we shouldn't be applying a force so only if it's less than that speed uh, we add more force and we'll do the same for the move left so if his linear velocity dot x is greater than negative move speed max so basically if his linear velocity is more than negative 120 we can add more force but if it's less than 120 negative 120 so negative 130 negative 140 and so on we don't want to add any more force so this should work okay now he's moving more slowly even if I keep the button pressed down he's not just accelerating insanely of course we can adjust this number if we want him to move a bit faster now our max speed is a bit greater that's quite fast should be okay all right so the next thing we want to do is let him jump right now he's just stuck to the floor can't do anything um, but since we're using a rigid body uh, we have no way of checking if he's on the ground or not we can't use move and slide like we could with a kinematic body so we're gonna have to get around that by using some ray casts so we'll do this We'll add a rate cost to the well that's far too long so we'll make it shorter maybe around eight pixels and we want it at the bottom of his body so we can just move it along um, the bottom will be 16 but I'll have it one pixel up so I'll just set it to 15 it will exclude the parent so it won't collide with his body anyway that's fine and I'm gonna make two one for each foot so let's move this to the left um, I've set it to minus 7, not minus 8. If it were minus 8, it would actually be slightly outside his body, which means it would trigger even against walls and things, which we don't want. Um, so we're just going to set it to minus 7. That way his body will collide with the wall, and this will always be away from the wall and shouldn't trigger if he's next to a wall. It should only collide with the floor or something below him, maybe an enemy or something. Uh, speaking of which, let's just set that now so it could collide with enemies as well. Uh, we don't need to set the player collision mask. Okay, so this is his left foot. Let's just rename that. Uh, Ray left foot. And we'll add another one for the right foot. Raycast 2D. Let's just rename that first. 
and we'll do the same again. So it's far too long, we'll make it shorter and we'll move it to a better position. So this time positive 7 and still negative 15. Why? What have I done? Sorry, positive 15. Okay, now he's got his two ray casts for feet. We'll need to actually check them. So we need some more variables here. And we'll just call these the same as the names. So ray right foot, which is our ray right foot. And we'll do the same for left. And that will be the left one. Okay, now we need to check if these are colliding and then let him jump. So I'm actually going to do this here first and then I'll change it a little later because there will be some problems. So let's see. Um, I'm going to check the key press, but in this case, I'm not going to use is action pressed because then if our jump button is held down, it'll keep triggering. Uh, we only want it to trigger once as he hits jump. So we'll use is just pressed. And we want to make a new force here for his jumping. And let's just call that jump force. So vector 2. This time I don't want to change the x value, he just needs to change the y. So x will be 0 um, and y will be negative because Godot uses uh, y negative going up and positive going down. I found this number to work well, um, minus 18,000. Uh, of course it depends on the weight of your body and so on. Uh, my body being 65 kilograms and the gravity set to what it is, this number works well. Uh, you might need to adjust these for your character. Okay, so if we press jump, we need to apply the jump force. So we'll begin, we'll use apply impulse, and this time we'll apply the jump force and just to the center of his body again. So again, zero, zero. Um, this isn't going to work too well. I'll show you the problem. Actually, it does work fine. However, I can keep pushing it while he's in the air, so that's the problem. So we need to use our ray casts. You can see they're red now while they're colliding with the ground, but once we jump, they're blue, so they're not colliding. Uh, so we need to check that. Um, but there will be another problem here. So if ray left foot is colliding, to check if it's colliding, or if ray right foot is colliding, uh, then he can jump. However, that triggered, I didn't even push jump. <laughs> well, he even fell past. Uh, so there's something wrong there. It's just triggering. This is returning true all the time. And the jump is being applied all the time, even without me pressing jump. Um, I'm actually going to make another function. Um, I'm going to call this check state and here we'll check if he can jump or not um, and we'll make a new variable for that. So we're going to call this I'm going to call this can jump and it'll be false to start. So if ray left foot is colliding or ray right foot is colliding then can jump is true else it's false so if those are not colliding oh sorry <laughs> if those are not colliding then we'll set this to false And we'll call this here
and then instead of checking these here we'll just check can jump so if it's pressed and can jump is true then we'll apply this okay let's see if this works well he's not jumping yet so that's fine I've pushed it he jumps once even if I keep pushing it he only jumps once what if I spam it no it seems fine okay and actually since I've made this function I'm gonna make another one and we'll call this get input actually let's change this one to set state because we're setting these variables and get input we're just going to check these things actually I'm still not quite happy with that name uh, we are actually performing actions in here so I'll rename this to instead of get input how about process input and then instead of doing all this here we'll just call the function so process input okay it's a bit cleaner let's see if it still works haven't broken anything okay it's fine so that's just the real basic controller done I can move and jump but I can't do anything else um, I plan to add some rolling to roll past enemies um, I do want to add wall climbing and wall jumping later um, I'm thinking about maybe swimming but <laughs> that may be pushing it a bit far um, but for now yeah this works fine he can jump exactly two blocks high comfortably he can't jump three blocks high so that'll help with level design uh, there are some bugs still so for example he can get stuck on walls uh, you can keep moving even though he's in the air um, so I'm gonna need to add some more ray cast check if he's on a wall and then decide what to do with him um, maybe adjust the move speed in the air uh, maybe adjust his falling speed um, I might want to add a finite state machine and then control the states that way um, yeah there's lots of things I can do I, of course I still need to add his sprite um, and animations so probably a few more months spent on getting this guy to work um, perfectly but this is a good start at least and yeah that's it for this video